Okay, so welcome back. I think this is going to be the final video of this little series. Um, and this is just a bit of a mop-up. Um, so I've taken you through the things that really didn't work. Um, I've taken you through the three big things that really did. And this is just a kind of the, the other bits and pieces that helped a bit that are worth mentioning because, you know, no, it's not the same for everybody. Um, little bit of uh, product placement here. Um, these are available via the website. Um, so yeah, the other things that helped. I think possibly the biggest and the thing that until more recently I didn't give enough credit to was um, starting to speak to a counsellor. So I've now been speaking to her for just over two years. So it was about halfway through my journey when I started speaking to her and she's incredible. Um, you know, I think, you know, she, she couldn't fix what was physically going wrong with me, but there was so much other stuff that was going on as a result of that, that she was just able to guide me through. And, um, I don't know, just, I, I just think she was absolutely amazing and I would have struggled so much more without her. So I think, I think everybody I mean, everybody in the world should have a therapist, um, but especially if you're going through something like this, you know, I just cannot recommend it enough. I think she was absolutely instrumental. Um, so what else? Um, I mean, I tried lots and lots and lots of different things. The anything to do with diet didn't make any difference to me. Diet, supplements, I tried the medicinals. I don't think any of that did anything for me. It has helped other people um, and it's definitely something that I'm kind of curious about looking into more but in terms of my recovery it didn't make any noticeable difference whatsoever. Um, what else did I do? Um, I did do the safe and sound protocol. Again I did notice some improvement with it and it absolutely fascinated me. It was a really cool experience doing it. Um, I've seen really amazing transformations of people having done it. I wouldn't say personally it transformed me, but it definitely did help. I did notice a bit of a shift and actually one of the coolest things that I noticed as a musician was that I'm now hearing frequencies that I didn't before. Um, so I'm much more aware of my nervous system in that regard. Um, and I notice now that when I'm playing my violin, for example, if I am only hearing a few frequencies, it's very obvious to me. And I'm able to go, hmm, my nervous system's not feeling so great today because I'm not hearing all those frequencies. So I've got a much more um, awareness of that, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it has done amazing things for people. Um, I can try and remember to drop links to all of these things um, below. <laughs> um, I tried um, some, I can't remember what, what it was called, a frequency machine. Um, I think it's probably along the same lines as some of those ARC things that people use. Some people have noticed improvements with it. It didn't do anything for me. Um, that's not to say that it isn't worth trying for others, but for me, it didn't. I think, um, I mean, I talked a lot about breathing and yoga nidra they were huge. I did do some yoga as well and that was also very helpful. Um, I don't put it into the big three because I think the yoga and the breathing helped much more um, but I do still do yoga now, not as often as I did but uh, it was just a way of doing movement in a more gentle way and I think I had always looked at movement and exercise as being like strenuous and hardcore and I loved doing that and you know as I said I tried to do stuff like that and it didn't really work and I had to pair that way 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 back and keep reducing and keep reducing to a point where I felt like I wasn't doing anything um, and then um, you know trying to find a safe way of doing something because I just couldn't bear the thought of not moving at all which is why I would then keep crashing because I would then try and do too much um but the yoga was good because it felt like I was doing something 
but it was kind of much more gentle. It was something I could do from home and if I got tired halfway through, then I could just stop. It wasn't like I'd gone for a walk or something and I had to get home. Um, I could literally stop in the middle of a yoga class and it was fine. Um, so that was also something that was really helpful. Uh, but yeah, other things, journaling, I found very useful some of the time. It wasn't something I did a lot of. Very occasionally, if I found myself getting very wound up about something or very upset about something or very angry, um, I found that getting those kind of like spikes of emotion, I found the journaling quite helpful for that. Um, and just things, I mean, I'm, I'm a very touchy person person um I love stuffed toys <laughs> and I find them incredibly soothing and you know I now kind of understand a whole load more about why that is um, but I found that if I was having a really rough time that actually I've got this amazing stuffed toy panda and it's just it's soft and squishy in the sort of absolutely perfect way for me and just to kind of you know, give it a hug, give it a stroke. I would just find that incredibly soothing if everything was going really wrong. Um, and, you know, I'd had a, you know, a crash or a symptom spike or something. So I found that really, really amazing as well. Um, the, the weighted blanket was pretty good, um, especially during the winter. In the summer, I mean, it never get that, it doesn't get that hot in the summer in Scotland anyway. Um, but um, especially in the winter when you wanted to be a bit more cosy, I found that particularly useful. Yeah, just kind of understanding what was going on, all sorts of resources. Oh, another one that was really useful was the practical stuff, drinking more fluids. Um, again, this came from understanding what was going on. So when I understood the kind of mechanism of POTS, of dysautonomia, um, you know, knowing that actually in the morning, firstly in the morning, I wasn't going to be that great. So if I had something to do, then it would be better if I could do it later in the day because I'd generally be feeling slightly better. So the mornings were my worst times. So not forcing myself to get up. Um, but then also doing those like squeezing your legs a little bit before you get out of bed, um, drinking a loads of um, water and salts or electrolytes. So it wasn't just the amount of fluid that you were taking in, it was the... Um, the salts and stuff so the absorption into your body um, because I think a lot of us notice that if we if we do drink more it just goes straight through us um, so that was really really good advice about that as well and you know it, it sounds a bit woo woo again but the just kind of acceptance part and when someone said that to me to start with I was just like no I'm not accepting that this is me forever like I will I will not accept that I refuse to accept that and it was realizing that that's not what it means well certainly that wasn't what it meant for me it was that accepting this is what it's like now and it's completely awful and it's terrible and you know yes that is terrible and accepting that and that this is going to take time and there are going to be ups and downs. But accepting this in this moment is not accepting this for life because I was never going to accept that. Um, so, you know, again, that's just kind of allowing myself a bit of patience, a little bit of grace. Neither of those things are things that come naturally to me. And just saying, yes, this is this is how it is now. It's not going to be like this forever. It will get better. It may not get better very quickly. It may not get better in a linear way. It's going to be up and down, but it is going to get better. And I know that because I have seen tangible evidence of the fact that it has already got better through these things that I've tried. So I think that's probably the bulk of things that were useful. I'm sure I've missed something off. Um, if I do, I will try and drop it in a um, comment underneath. <laughs> um, and I hope some of that has been useful. I am very happy to answer questions. I can't answer medical questions, but I can certainly answer questions about my own experience and I can answer questions about breathing. Um, so do feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, and yeah, keep, um, 
keep up that hope and belief because you're going to get there.